Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Fitchburg Cultural Council's monthly meeting. This is Tuesday, March 15th. We're bringing the meeting to order at 4.32 p.m. We have Casey Taylor, Tamar Russell Brown, Shara Osgood, Eileen Berger, Liz Murphy, Samuel Luxema, and Joe Bowen in attendance today. And this is a public meeting. This is being recorded and saved for future use. So anything you say here definitely should be um, public ready and also should have something to do with our agenda. Our membership here is volunteer. We're part of the Fitchburg Cultural Council and we're basically part of City Hall and we're a volunteer body that's attached to the Massachusetts Cultural Council and our primary responsibility in the state and in the city is to help with the cultural aspects to promote culture and diversity and encourage excellence in the arts, humanities, and sciences. So with that, we'll go into um, our announcements. And uh, one of the announcements I wanted to mention is that the, the Fitchburg Open Studios application is ready today for 2022. And so we are taking applications for the 2022 Fitchburg Open Studios. And we will get into that a little more later. And also our spring bazaar is open for requests, applications as well. Um, so just another announcement here at the beginning. So the next part we'll go into is our grantee updates, um, extensions, modifications. I wanted to ask Eileen first, is there anything that you'd like to report from any of our grantees? No, things are going as usual. I finally took all of, I finally closed out 2020. I took all of the 2020, I have every completion sign except, uh, you know, I took them and gave them to Joan David. So they'll go in the vault downstairs. Um, there were three from 2020 that are still going forward. I think two of them have had their um, event in March of this year. And we've got another one coming around in the fall. So I moved them on to the next uh next couple of years. Um, so, uh, so I'm just really working with them um, getting in the commitment letters and the W-9s, getting them to the, to, the, uh, to the mayor's office. Thank you very much, Eileen. Um, so at this point, Shara, since uh, you have a modification you'd like to do, or maybe you wanna tell us, now would be the time we can discuss your adjustment. Okay, so um, the grant for 2020, to the basketball court mural at Low Park um, because of, well, two things. There's um, the BF Brown project is moving forward on a faster timeline than they had expected. And they're gonna start building really soon, very exciting. But between that and the fact that Tom Skwarski and Meredith Garrity had another project of a similar scope that they wanted me to work on that is on the same timeline. They both requested that I push off the basketball court project for a year or so, like until they're done with the construction of BF Brown and that we can do it in a much bigger way because they were concerned that if we put the energy toward doing it now and got the mural painted and then it had to be sort of torn up and redone in a year that people would feel disenfranchised by it. And the other project that's happening is similar, it's, but it's, um, it's Cushing Street and Mill Street, and uh, it's gonna happen in a different way, but it would also be a community involved project. My request was to, extend the the time frame for the for the grant because I, I have a letter in writing from Tom Swarovski that I will definitely be be part of the creative team when they get to the low park project and that it's likely that the basketball court thing will happen in a much bigger way and so I feel like it's worth it to push it back and in the meantime I would love to propose to be able to do a community day event in the park where we do um, sidewalk chalk art on the basketball court and have the whole community involved in that. And um, I don't have 
numbers and figures, the chalk itself would be at most 100 or $150, but it would be the time and energy involved of coordinating the event and getting all of the different community organizations involved in it. I've already done some of that like work for the basketball court mural. So I, it would probably tie in, but that's both of those things are things I would like to propose. So you're actually asking to totally modify your grant from one thing to another, if that's in my understanding that right? I, I think, I think that, yeah, I, I, well, I'm not sure which is better, whether it's better to just push that funding off until next year or to be able to put at least a portion of that toward this shorter term project that won't cost as much. Well, you know, I've been dealing with this from 2020, 2021. And um, how much do you think your project will cost if you, uh, it sounds as though you'll need more money for the project in 2023. It's pretty, I think the we've approved, we've approved things in the past where people have put their project forward, particularly during this pandemic time, when a lot of people weren't able to do their project. So we've, you know, to me, it's not an unusual thing to push a project forward into 2023, um, in which case you may have to ask for more money um, if you're gonna do a bigger project, but we can cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, for the project that you want to do instead, how much money would you see it being? As I said, I haven't quite, I haven't yeah. quite priced it out because this just sort of came up as, as a possibility. It would probably be less than what I was asking for the mural because the materials are a lot less expensive. But well, I guess and as for, I, can I yeah. clarify? Sure, sure, as sure. For the, um, the larger project at the basketball court happening later, there's other funds that are, you know, that have been guaranteed uh, to be given toward that that renovation of that basketball court, there's like a hundred thousand dollars in another place. Oh, wow. I know that that money, some of that money would would be in the mix as well. So I, I have other resources toward that project if it happens at a bigger. Well, level. I would move that you. Um put this in writing, I, I don't think, uh, I can't speak exactly for the council, but I can't imagine why we'd be against such a thing, but it would help us if you put the thing in writing about pushing this other thing forward to 2023 and how much and what the new project is and what you would, uh, you know, what, what kind of money you think you'll need for that. I think that would help us make a better decision, might help you make a better decision too. So that's what I would move that you would do that. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. Oh, people jumped around my screen. Audrey, go ahead. Yeah, oh, everyone's popping around everywhere. Um, I don't think we can uh, delegate additional money, but if you want to take some of your budget um, originally uh, delegated to the basketball project um, and take some of that and put it to this year's talking um, active uh, event. Um, that's a possibility, but we wouldn't be able to um, find more funds and um, send it there. Joe? You're on mute, Joe. Joe. Yeah, there we go. I'm back. Um, I have some thoughts on this, and um, there's, there's a few different approaches that you can take on. It really would stem from what would be allowable by the Mass Cultural Council, what would be allowable by conflict of interest um, laws and such. Um, since this uh, this project was originally funded for your Shara when you were not a member of the council, and now that you are a member of the council, modifying this um, in such a way may pose a conflict of interest, which we could still vote to approve, but we would have to follow specific guidelines and disclosures and things like that in order to make it happen. So uh, my recommendation would really be is present your, put together the options that you could work with, and then we'll work with, have, have Tamar or someone else on the council work with the Mass Cultural Council to 
to run by what is the more feasible option that meets all the the requirements of of that project so that we can, the requirements to fund using those those monies the alternative is you can just give all the money back and reapply through the normal process um, for a new project for for next year um, that the second recommendation is my simplest and the one that I would probably recommend the most um, like I said we can go through the whole conflict of interest disclosures and such and um, assuming the council would be favorable towards towards the project as you presented then you could still get your funds um, and then the, the third is just a comment about the timing that um, the city says that you'll be able to do it next year that the BF Brown project construction will be completed in a year I um, I'm not always um, trusting of a statement like that, knowing how the the world of construction is, the world of government and everything that, you know, we may tie those funds up for another year. And I think that if we can free those funds up for the benefit of other grantees uh, in the interim until it's available for you for your project, I think that that would be an appropriate measure as well. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Liz? Uh, yeah, I just want to um, uh, uh, support Joe in saying that it is it is like it is not likely that the BF Brown renovation is going to be completed within a year. Just in my own experience um, working with these type of projects, um, but uh, I think it'd be closer to two years, maybe when you're ready to um, think about the basketball court. And I don't know if that basketball court project is happening at the same time as BF Brown, if it's happening after BF Brown. After. Um, yeah, so I would, maybe maybe it'd be good to reach out to um, uh, Newview and get um, a little more info on their timeline. Cause I, I think it's a, you know, what you're proposing is a good project, but, um, you know, I agree. And, and you're, you're, you're taking on so much, Shara, squeezing in um, the, the chalk art piece. Um, you know, I, I guess I would encourage you to, to think about whether or not you have the time to do that, considering everything else you have going on. And I, I know you're, you're doing a lot. Um, and it's amazing, but, um, but it's a lot. <laughs> Shara? Yeah. I just I wanted to, to just clarify that the reason well the, the information about the projection of it, of BF Brown being done within a year came directly from New View. But I think I agree that it it's highly optimistic that, that it would get done in a year. Um, and it's more about like the, the chalk board thing was a way of being able to do something for the community now where they can feel engaged, they can connect with each other, and they can feel like we're doing something to beautify that space, that they don't have to wait a year or two until the larger project happens. But there were a lot of things in place that were encouraging me to, to push the project back until the, the more funding is there and they can do it in a bigger way. Anybody else? I think it sounds good, Char, that you would put together some sort of proposal and then bring it to the next meeting and then we can vote on it then. Absolutely. And we'll have to get that form. And yeah, I can talk to Mass Council about it too. Because I agree with Joe, it would be better either to have the money back in the kitty or to be able to use it sooner than later. So it's in the community getting used versus sitting around for a couple of years. Right. And I can come back with requests when the project is actually happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the feedback. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So if there's no other, are there any other grants in the grant uh, update modification extension? I think Casey, you mentioned some grants you just wanna make note of for the public. Are you on mute? Are you able to speak? I was on mute, sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, point out, I noticed the Mass Cultural Council had the Asian American and Pacific Islander Arts and Culture COVID-19 Recovery Program grants available now for the public. 
Um, the deadline for those is March 23rd. Uh, there's a traditional arts apprenticeship uh, that is a yearly thing that they provide funding for. Um, the deadline for that one is March 31st. And the Mass Humanities Expanding Massachusetts Stories Grant is a, a combination of three different grants that aim to support organizations and um, story collectors, essentially, uh, in helping the Commonwealth push forward uh, resident stories from people who are traditionally unrecognized or um, have like traditionally been excluded from public conversation. Um, and that deadline is April 11th. I had another thing, but it wasn't about grants. So I'm just gonna stop. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing those. That's excellent for the public to know. All right, so if we have no other um, extensions, modifications, or updates, we will move to the treasurer's report. Um, so Liz, are you able to do the treasurer's report? I am. Um, let me just get the right document up. Uh, so I sent everybody the treasurer's report um, this morning, and it's also available in our shared uh, um, FCC folders. Um, and then you can actually see this. So what I shared was a PDF, but you can actually see the um, spreadsheet um, if you want to so, like, check the numbers um, on uh, in our drive as well. So um, this report, which um, completed at the end of last week is through the end of February. So um, we had no change in our local funds. So our local funds still stand at $1,559.97. Um, we did have a couple of transactions in the FY21 grant account. Um, our ending balance is $9,520.70. Um, we had a number of grantee uh, um, checks that went out for um, the FY22 grant. Um, thank you, Eileen um, and Joan David. We processed all that. and. Um, those go through 225, so there might be additional checks that are coming out. Um, that'll be March, but uh, through then we had uh, ending. So we started with 48,400, and our ending balance is 40,984. Um, when we add that all together, we have 52,000. $64.67, uh, $64 and then if you look on the second page our committed but not expended funds right now are um, the Fitchburg Arts Collective print publication. We, we've we gotten, uh, or Eileen's gotten um, info from the Fitchburg Cultural Alliance that they are going to do that. So we haven't issued the check yet, but that, so that's still in, outstanding. We also have $750 from a student video production project that was St. Bernard's and it's not clear to me if we're um, if they're going to request those funds and have completed that project, I, mean, I think you said you had. I was going to call them. I haven't done yeah. it yet. I've been, but I will. I'll call them tomorrow. Um, so that does leave. Um, so uh, we we forwarded seven thousand one hundred fifty four dollars from previous grants into the 22 grant when we allocated and then funded all of our grant contracts. So we actually have $616 that's not committed to anything um, that we could commit in a future round. And, you know, if the St. Bernard's project doesn't happen, then we have that 750 as well. So that's where we stand. Thank you very much. Seems like we're organized. Yeah, well, have, having access to um, all of the checks that get issued and being able to see those reports makes it a little easier to do the treasurer's report. Yeah, I can imagine. Thank you so much. So You're with welcome. that, there is a um, something we need to approve here. So there was a stopwatch that was purchased for $11.99 with the city's credit card. And so we, uh, maybe you could just fill us in, Liz, we need approval for that amount. We need a Yes, and it, it, it is, you'll see in the treasurer's report, it did end up getting charged to the FY21 account. Um, so we need approval for that. We can back it out if, it, um, if we don't get approval. So, um, so that option is there. 
So Liz, so, could you could you frame the motion for us? Sure. Exactly how we need to do this. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve the expenditure of eleven dollars and ninety nine cents to W. B. Mason for a stopwatch that is used for the um, FATV uh, projects. Or FCC TV. F sorry, FCC TV projects. I'll make a second. Okay, so we have a first from Liz and a second from Audrey. Would anyone like to speak to the motion? Um, so Claudia and Tamar, you are the ones that would be using the stopwatch. And I sent you guys a video. I figured out how easy it is. But I wonder if the two of you feel like that there's no use for the stopwatch, if we should just return it. Claudia, you're on Claudia. mute. You're still on mute, Claudia. Now? Yep. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I have it right in my kitchen. Uh, if we don't need it, uh, could we could return it. It's up to Tamar and Claudia. What do you use well, it for? Just curiously. It's for the time. So when Audrey sets, when she starts the runner in FCC TV for the show to begin, Casey gets so many minutes that she can spend with each person on the screen. And we have to clock the time. So we give her warnings. I usually do it by my hand or with a card. And then mm -hmm. Claudia stays in the, like the newsroom or what that room is called, the audio room. Control room. Control room. And she gives direction to me. Um, so it's basically like the timing of Casey's program. Okay. Well, can I, can I say something about that? I think Tamar and I, um, it, we worked it out pretty well. Not that I've done it a lot, but we, I never knew, I never used, uh, the stopwatch. So same. Yeah, so, I think I think you guys did a great job on the last episode. I had a I had a panic during it because I thought that we were like off, but it turns out it was my fault. Uh, <laughs> I set up the commercial, uh, I set up the the PSA in which I thought it was I gave you guys a minute and a half to transition guests, but it turns out you only got 15 seconds. And we're all wondering why <laughs> why isn't anyone ready? Well, that's why, because somehow the autoplay came off. And but uh, uh, other than that, everyone <laughs> except for me did great. <laughs> no, you did great too. We all everyone did. Yes, great. <laughs> it was a fantastic episode, and it was really really easy to edit and fix. <laughs> so I think it might be more hassle than it's worth to send it back, and I think we will find a use for it. That's just my personal feeling. Okay. I'll it's, be the keeper. It's 11.99 and I think yeah. we can use it. So, all, all right. right. So anybody else so, want to speak to the motion or we had a first from Liz and a second from Audrey. We can take a roll call since we're on the screen. Okay, Casey. Sorry, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Tamar? Yes. Shara? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Liz? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Claudia? Yes. And Sam? Yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thanks, Liz. Okay, so the next one, the, the, um, we need to vote on some spending for the Spring Bazaar, which puts us right into the next agenda item, which is our spring, our events for this year. Um, so there's a request here of the registration fee for the Spring Bazaar. Is it too late for this now that the applications are already out in the public, Liz? Do you have a price on the applications? I have a, sorry, go ahead. I do, I have, yes. And um, so we have, uh, uh, let me go back to it. <laughs> I think you sorry. proposed uh, um, $20 to $35, depending on the size of the space. 
Yeah, and, and as I was mapping out the spaces, I realized that um, the outdoor spaces were going to have to be 10 by 10, but everything inside was either six by 13 or, um, or eight by 10, six by 13 or eight by 10. So I ended up with $20, $25 and $30 for the fee. So the, the 10 by 10s, which are outside are a $30 fee. Um, $25 is for the larger indoor spaces. And then the six by six is $20, whether it's inside or outside. Thank you. So just, uh, yeah, just to get it on the books, um, I'd just like to get this uh, a motion out there that we accept the funding that the uh, PR committee has put together that will fund the, the marketing for our spring bazaar. Um, so I move, I, I move that we accept the funding measures that the PR committee put out for the uh, spring bazaar. I second that motion. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Shara. So we have a first from Eileen, a second from Shara. Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Okay. Joe, can I turn it over to you? Or Casey? Uh, yes. Tamar? Yes. Shara? Yes. Eileen? Yes. Liz? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Claudia? Yes. And Sam? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Liz, could I'm supposed to be doing a press release on that. So could you send me a copy of the uh, form or the information on it so I can do a press release so Matt can get it out? I think he wanted to get it out at the first of the month. Sure. Are we, we doing a press release on the event itself or the vendor applications being available? Probably the vendor application is in the lead, but we'll do it on the event itself too. Okay. Um, but sure. so could you give me some info? I, you know, I guess it's probably on the, um, on the things you're sending out to the vendors anyway. Yeah, I'll forward um, the email to you that I sent to all the vendors. Okay. Um, that so everybody from last year or last, well, I guess technically it is last year with the winter um, <laughs> um, got an email to inviting them to participate again. Um, and so far we've had 11 sign up since I send it out on, sent it out on Sunday. So okay, just you send me that. You send me that, and I have, and I ha I'll probably have questions. I'll just go back to you in between us. So we can get something to Matt. Absolutely. So just on that same topic, so we're on the events now on the agenda. Um, so with the Spring Bazaar, is there anything? So we've, we're have we working on some marketing materials. We're working on the Facebook page. Eileen will do the PR. The application's already out there. Um, is there anything, Liz, PR committee, that the council can help with um, that we all need to know about? Certainly, if anybody can share the event on social media, mm -hmm. that would be a big help. Going yeah, forward. invite all of your friends um, from the Fitchburg area um, that would likely come. Um, tell I, everyone about well, it. One of the things that came up uh, for discussion at the PR committee was the fact that we have a mailing list. And um, I don't know how often we use it. Casey, you know more about it than anyone, I think. Um, could we use the mailing list to send out information? about the uh, Spring Bazaar? You know, just uh, maybe not right away, but before it, so people will come to it? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure, is this question directed at me or just generally? I guess you, because you seem to know the most about it, at least from, from what I gathered from the PR meeting. Okay, yeah, it's um, it's just a general public uh, public interest email list. So anyone who was at the Winter Bazaar or any of the events that we've hosted publicly within the last, uh, I think, two years um, is on that list because they want to hear about these things. So yeah, I would say. Right. So I can write a blurb for it if you would like. If I send it to you, Casey, could you put it out? I don't know a whole lot about the best way to do uh, like yeah. new in bulk um Tamar. so we have the fitchburg open studios has its own uh, mailchimp account so i can use that and i could if you have all those contacts 
I could start a separate list within that platform and we could send it from that list, from that account. It'll I come from- be, Yeah, that'd be good. I think it'd just be wonderful to have a working um, okay. email list. We can just send you know things out all of the time. Okay, I can do that. I wonder, I know that um, on MailChimp, we can change like who the from is, like even the, like it doesn't have to be the email that is, um, is the login. And yeah. I wonder if we change that to the pitchfork.mcc at Gmail, it won't bounce back, but I don't know. All right, well, we can try it. It doesn't hurt just, like freak me out. Like <laughs> <laughs> we can do it, we'll do it. That's a great, that's great. It is, um, is there anything else about the spring bazaar that we need to know or? Um, I guess I would, you know, I was thinking it might be good to make some um, lawn signs that would go out maybe a couple of weeks before the events, you know, maybe just two weeks before the event. If you put them out too early, they disappear. Um, but, uh, you know, so I don't know how people feel about that. That's, um, you I know, think one of the, the things that we could use the funds that come in for the vendor fees for. Yeah, I have. I a think quote. that's a good idea. I'm already working on a quote for that. I thought I'd go ahead and oh, sweet. Because it takes time. Like even if we all approve it, like to get them done, I'm, we might. I don't know. And then the distribution of them. Um, I'm sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. No, no you're fine. fine. Good. You're good. Okay, so that's the spring bazaar. Um, if there's nothing else, one more on that, thing about the spring okay. bazaar. Okay. I was. Okay. There was a great piece in uh, the local paper earlier this week about the apple uh, orchard uh, bazaar that's May 13th. I don't know what it, anybody saw. What is it? Sholem? Sholem Farms. Farms. Sholem, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big article. The best thing about it was a picture, and I don't, it wasn't a recent picture, just a picture of somebody in front of apple blossoms. And I wondered if there was some way we could get a picture to send out. Um, with the press release of any kind. It might be just of Tamar and Liz getting together and holding a mm. sign or no. Uh, well, we, we think you know about what? it. <laughs> we have <laughs> photos. Take some photos have, last at the Winter Bazaar. Yeah, we have photos from the Winter Bazaar. So we can just grab those. They're, I mean, we could probably like find them on our Facebook page if we I go back okay. far enough, you know? Yeah. Well, if you look at one that looks um, nice enough, but um, not too space you know that it might go for the spring bazaar too think yeah. about it yeah okay all right so that tamar, is you yeah. oh i was gonna say tamar you're you're doing a lot of the graphic design for the spring bazaar if uh when you're logged into the um to our gmail account and you go to the photos app you'll see all of the photos from the winter bazaar uploaded on there okay that's a good good reminder Okay, um, so that's the Spring Bazaar. Is there anything else? And I want to ask Liz this question. So there's a big, the Art Week week, which we're putting the bazaar in that week. And this is a lot, there's going to be a lot going on. Is there anything from the city that we need to know about? Is there anything from any of the other organizations that we need to know about in regards to Art Week generally? Does anybody know? Um, yeah, I, I think... Um... First Thursday is going to be um, uh, a focus of some of the events. So that's May 5th. And tomorrow night, um, I'm going to be at a meeting with Monique. And um, I'm not sure if Joe Ferguson is going to be there. And Shara. Um, and uh, whoever can attend, for, I think, the art, some art stewards um, to talk about the um, lights festival potentially being on that night or if they don't want that night, maybe another night. Um, but so doing another lights festival would be part of the event. Um, I think as part of first Thursdays, the um, Pittsburgh Cultural Alliance wants to, um, or is hoping to be able to open or have an open house for the um, Main Street Studios um, and maybe an art market. Mm. And um, Jesse is not here, but of course, Art and Bloom is happening um, Saturday and Sunday at the beginning of May. So the, it's, I think it's actually April 30th and May 1st. Um, so that's happening during Art Week. Um, I am hoping that we can start reaching out to our other 
um, just other uh, arts organizations, maybe some of our grantees um, to invite them to um, develop any kind of event for Art Week. You know, it's not just about what I think the city and the cultural counselor and, and um, Reimagine North and Maine are doing, but it's any, any art event that's gonna be happening during that week, we can, we can highlight them all. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll start doing and that. I love that, Liz. And I also know that the Community Mural Institute is um, planning their paint parties to be hopefully during that week of Art Week. So. Joe, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to um, expound a little bit on the Future for Cultural Alliance and the Open Studios, um, sorry, with the Open Studios, of, the Main Street Studios project at the at 675 Main Street. And the Alliance is currently negotiating a lease um, for the space. And we would love to make sure that it's, uh, it's in place before Art Week um, so that the space can be opened up um, in its state of I wouldn't call it a state of confusion, but state of uh, under construction, like it, it's an as is thing right now. And, uh, but we're, they're, they're hoping to also include um, an opportunity for people to come in and shop for some furniture and, and leftovers that uh, were in the building that um, folks might be interested in purchasing and it will help fund the studio project. So you'll let us know when that's, uh, when that's public, right? Yes. That's very exciting. Okay, um, so I think we, that's a lot. We have <laughs> a lot going on in the next two months. So um, the next thing has to do with these events. This is a request from Audrey um, to discuss having a, a FCC table, if I'm not mistaken, Audrey, at these at different events. So do you want to have a word about that, Audrey? Yeah, um, I think it was Eileen's idea that we reach out to our grantees um, and ask them if we can um, have a Fitchburg Cultural Council table at their programs um, so that, you know, we can represent the council. And um, if we have our public input survey ready, we can, we can uh, ask people to fill that out at these different events. So we're not just getting the same group of people that come to our public input meeting. It's also these other events that are happening. And um, so something I wanted to already tackle, usually we don't tackle for a long time, but um, uh, if there would be any volunteers to look at our, um, uh, to prepare this year's public input survey. Casey, are you volunteering? We, how do you propose we'd go about doing that, Audrey? Get together and talk it through or? Um... Well, Casey put it together last year based on the previous years. So maybe, I mean, maybe we could give ourselves some homework for the priorities. We all, and I could send us all a copy if you want me to of the last one. And then if you have a suggestion, we can put it together for the next meeting and give it to Casey. And then Casey could work on the next the next round, and then she put all the data together from the survey, from the pri request for priorities from the public. So that's how it happened last year. So does that sound like a good idea? Sounds like a good idea to me. Mm. Yeah, that works for me. Yes. Yeah, does I that? Know that? Oh, I was just gonna say I know last year I added a bunch of questions that are like public relations related, and we can delete a lot of them so that we can make it like really simple. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, here's I the question. If we do it between now and next month, is it going to be, could we have it ready in time for Art Week? That's, that's my, a Casey question. That's a Casey question. Well, I think if we got it out and had deadlines on when you had to get it in, yes. we probably could. Yeah, okay, so our, that's perfect. If I have a solid deadline, I can get it done. Okay. okay. So the next like meeting will be the um, April, is it 19th? April 19th? Mm. April 19th. And so that'll give you like um, a week and a half before yeah, our week. Or would you like a, would you like us to get the stuff in by um, April 
10th or so. That way you could have a draft by April 19th. And um, I don't see why if we got copies of the thing right away, we couldn't get it right off back to you and set a, a earlier deadline so that we could have it for the meeting. What do you think? I think that sounds, is uh, the 19th is our next meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, um, on the, so the next meeting we should vote on the priorities then basically is what we should do. Well, not vote on the priorities, vote on the questions about yeah. the priorities. <laughs> but given your schedule, Casey, when would you, if you, if it goes out, say this week, um, when would you like to have it back? Give us a deadline. I would like to have it back by the 31st, if that's. Uh, the 31st of March. Okay, okay, I think that's reasonable. If it goes out this week, I think it's reasonable. So, um, so Tamar, you're gonna send it out? Yeah, I'll send and it out to everybody. And put and that deadline in? Yep, and then we have a deadline okay. on the 31st. And then Casey will have time to work on it before the next meeting and then we can vote on it at the next meeting. That sounds great. Okay, one other thing has happened in April, I should tell you, I have to write the press release for that too. It's the meet and greet at River Sticks. That's right. And that's April 28th, right. that's a Thursday. April 28th. That's a Thursday, so. Um, okay. So we need to do a little bit and of that's for all the grantees or that's for anybody who wants to come. But for the grantees, it's just a it's it's going to be I I really have to get to her this week. And I know that you were thinking if I want to have a live meeting with her, Liz, and you were thinking you might be interested in going along one evening next week. Is there an evening that's better for you? Um <clears throat> or none of them. Well, um, let's see, the March 21st. I can let you guys do that offline. How's that? Okay, yeah, all right, we'll do it offline. Smart. Figure that out. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, Mark, if yeah, you no, me the oh, meet just... is for, I just want to say to the public that the meet and greet is for everybody. It's a creative meet and greet. So the way it's happened before, it's basically networking. So if you're yes. an artist in the community, you're um, a business person in the community, you're a grantee, or just a member of the public that's interested in what we're doing, um, come and network and bring your business cards and bring your art. And um, it's all about connecting everybody together. So that's a great, I did forget about that event. So that's really good. We need to talk about that again next month. So we get people to come. Um, go ahead, Audrey. Sorry. I was just gonna say, if you make me a host, I can share screen our list of dates for the year um, <laughs> so that we can, visually see what we're doing <laughs> this year um, yeah if you're a writer a musician creative uh event organizer come to the creative meet and greet what do you need uh again audrey she what? wanted to share the screen to show all the events for the year um but oh. i don't i don't think that's necessary for us to okay. do right now um, i think we've we've tackled all of them we've tackled the big ones for spring so Okay, so I am going to adjourn the meeting, I think, because our bylaws you don't have for me in our prior meeting minutes, you don't have, so nobody was able to review them before tonight's meeting. Um, Liz? Uh, yes, um, just one last thing, uh, Tamar, I know you had um, asked about um, how the um, Fitcherbrook Open Studios folks could pay yes. um, online. And um, I actually just got a follow-up email uh, yesterday, I believe, um, <clears throat> from the company that's setting this up, and they did the test of it, and then they showed me, um, they got their, they had to, like, connect the accounts, and the, the fees went through, so or the charges went through to, to test it, so it's all set, but it's not live yet, hopefully within a couple of days. The last thing that I did, I when I, I replied to them and said, can you just confirm that this donation button, that the information is going to come to us and that we will have to send the acknowledgement um, of their donation letters and not them? Because that way we can accept payments that aren't donations and make and, and screen those out, right? Because if somebody donates, my understanding is we're a charity and that they would be able to deduct that on their taxes. Is that your understanding of how the donation uh, donation would work? Anyone? Yes, generally yeah. that's how it would work. Um, so 
if we if they were paying for an event we'd have them put the event name in that line and that way we could kind of separate those from actual donations so i'm just get waiting for that confirmation but i don't think that's going to hold up it going live that's just a logistics question for us so I, I went live with the application today and we just put for now to to send a check to city mm -hmm. hall like we've done in the past so as soon as that changes let me know and i will change it online i will i will um, um follow up with that woman instead of waiting for her to okay contact me again yeah it's live so if it, we can take yeah. payments that's even better it's better yeah Okay, thank you. Yeah, I knew I knew that it was coming. So I, that's why I didn't bring it up because I know you told me it was coming. So, okay. So the um, Fitchburg Open Studios applications are now open and so are the scholarship applications for our senior high school students. Yes, and Claudia was very kind. She delivered packets to all the schools um, with a press release and all the information. And Sizer, of course, we're CM. They have it through digital as well. Um, so the schools have it and Mr. Kushmerik was very kind. His office shared it on social media for us and made their own graphic that was very helpful. <laughs> um, and City Hall has the, P the press release and Matt had sent it out. So I, I didn't see that it made it to press, but I guess we could try again. But yeah, so that's out and that's a, the students can apply now also for that. Which schools did it get on. sent to? So the only one it didn't go to, um, and you guys correct me if it should, because we can do another packet, maybe I'll ask Claudia to help, was um, Money Tech. So it went to Fitchburg High, it went to St. Bernard's, and it went to Sizer, all the high schools in town. I think it should go to, Mon uh, to Monty Tech as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I agree. But I, I don't have an extra copy. No, I'll do one. And I'll go up to Monty Tech. Yeah, I'll do a packet. Okay. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks, Tamar. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, thanks for that. Does someone else have their hand up? Casey has their hand up. Has it's hand me. Up. I have my hand up. Um, is anyone here familiar with Creative Ground, the website? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. So they recently uh, finished their relaunch. Um, and I was looking at that today. Our profile on there was last updated in 2016. So if anyone wow. is interested in updating that or finding the account information or anything, uh, that's a thing I wanted to bring up. <laughs> Not on the agenda, Casey, but I love it. We'll put that on for next month. I love it. No, that's a great <laughs> website. It's a great platform. Like actually every creative out there should have a profile on there. It's a great, great. Um, I agree. And they've been working like really hard on it over the last two years. Like might as well use it. So All this right. is a site that, that we have, the cultural council has a profile on. Yes. So creative ground okay. is a, a new England. I don't know if it's NEMA specifically, uh, or if it's just like a new England based arts, uh, networking website where mm -hmm. ideally um, artists of different kinds, people with space for artists to work in, people hosting events, people doing anything involving the arts of any kind in Massachusetts, uh, not Massachusetts, New England, can find each other and mm -hmm. get information on each other. It's like, it's a directory. It's a big giant directory. Is it like LinkedIn cool. for artists? In the state of Massachusetts. Going for, yeah, in mm -hmm. all of New England. Cool. All right, so we're going to adjourn. <laughs> that wasn't on the agenda, Casey. I love it. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you, everybody, for your attendance today and for participating for your volunteer service. We're going to adjourn. It's 5.20 p.m. I'd like to take a motion to adjourn. Can I say I'll something before motion. we adjourn? Oh. Is it uh, on the agenda? Uh, can I count as a no? I don't know. I mean, it's just, uh, if you're on FCC TV, we have a, um, we're taping on the 25th. That's it. <laughs> we'll put that under events. All right, 25th FCC TV. Okay, now can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I'll second. That was who? Liz. And then Liz. Claudia. A second from Claudia. Got that in the minutes, Casey. 
All in favor, if you could raise your hand. Have a good night, everybody.